I'm Pam with PJ's Glass Creations and I think it's time to start thinking about fall and in thinking about that I thought maybe a scarecrow bobblehead would be pretty cute. So you can see his head kind of wobbles a little bit and if you really like this just follow along. I have the pattern in the details. I have all the instructions here on my tutorial. I hope you enjoy it. Let's start creating. I've pre-cut all of my pieces for my scarecrow bobblehead. You can find the pattern in the description of this video. Uh, it's actually not too difficult to make. There's not too many pieces. A lot of it is using enamels to paint the details. And the first thing you're going to need to do is to make your eyes because you need to have those before you start assembling and they have to go in for a full fuse. Everything else here will go in for a tack but this one needs to go in for a full. And all I'm doing is taking these irises, which are a clear or a transparent, I guess I should say, turquoise, and I am gluing it with some super glue, just plain old super glue, don't use gel. You can use a glass tack or an Elmer's glue, just whatever you do, make sure you use it sparingly. And I am just putting the irises right at the bottom of this oval and then I'm going to put it in for a full fuse and then tomorrow we can finish making the bobblehead. My eyes have come out of the kiln. As you can see, I have pre-cut all of my pieces and as I said before, you can find this pattern in the description of this video. And the first thing I'm going to start on is his face. And I need to determine kind of where I want his eyes to be Let's see if his nose is on. That looks pretty good. And I'm just going to put a little mark kind of where each one is and move them out of the way. And I am using a glass enamel paint. I got this particular one from AAE Glass. It is Easy Fire Enamel and it comes as a powder and you just mix it with the medium. And from that little dot that I made, I'm making three little eyelashes. I'm trying to keep my touch really light so that my eyelashes are kind of wispy, but that one's a little too light. Let me try it again. And I'm not going to worry too much about this middle part of the eyes because that part will be covered by his eyeball. And speaking of his eyeballs, he does need a pupil on his eye. So I'm going to add some pupils and I'm going to try to get those as even as I can. Okay, that looks good to me. And the next thing I need to do is his mouth. So I'm gonna put this here as a placeholder just kind of so I know where I'm working, what kind of space I'm working with. Get some more enamel on my brush. And I'm gonna make kind of a wavy mouth for him. Again, I'm using a light touch because I don't want it too thick. And then since he's a scarecrow, he needs some stitches on him. So again, I'm using a light touch adding some stitches like somebody stitched his mouth. And the last thing I'm adding on his face is some eyebrows. So his face is ready. The next thing that needs some work is his face and sorry his body and you just need something where you can get a straight line and I'm going to use this and put a line right down the middle if my line gets too thick it's okay I can go back later with a toothpick after the enamel's dry and kind of fix it up but hopefully this is good so this is like the separation in his shirt, where his two parts of his shirt would be meeting. It's not a perfect line. I'm not gonna worry about it right now because I can always 
fix it after it's dry. I'm gonna clean off my brush. Change enamel. And the next thing I need to do is give him some patches on his shirt. So this particular patch, I'm using a yellow. I'm gonna make it a heart shape. So about right here, I'm gonna put a heart. Easy way to do hearts is to make two circles side by side and then bring them down. So there's one patch on his shirt. Clean off my brush. And I'm gonna make a green patch on his shirt. These enamels, you do have to stir every time you use them. And this one I'm gonna make just a uh, square and just as with the enamel on the faces if it's not perfect don't worry about it you can always fix it after it's dry Okay, so I have his face, I have his, oh, I don't know what I did to that eyeball. I have his face, I have his shirt. I didn't put the black markings on his uh, patches yet because I need to um, let that enamel dry before I put the black part on, but I do need to redo this iris or uh, pupil to his eyeball. All right, now I'm going to put these three pieces, four pieces, in the oven just so that the enamel can dry. And while I'm doing that, I'll show you how I work on the hat. I put them in at 170 degrees for about 10 minutes. And by that time, the enamel is nice and cured. My other pieces are in the oven. And while they're drying, we're gonna work on the hat. And to do the hat, there's two pieces. I want to add a little bit of black to it. I don't know how well you can see this on the video, but it has some dimension to it. Not, actually, not some dimension, but some painted lines on it so that it looks a little bit like straw. And to do that, I'm using my black enamel, but I really don't want much on my brush at all. And this is a fan brush. If you don't have a fan brush, you can use whatever kind of brush you have. And I am going to just gently go over it. I, you can see I got a lot of it off on the paper towel before I even started. I'm gonna go one way and then I'm gonna go the other way. And if it's a little too much, it doesn't matter because we're gonna go back later with a toothpick and with the toothpick, we can take off even more of that paint. So I'm going to put this into the oven with the other pieces as well. My pieces are all out of the kiln and I'm just going to touch them up a little bit for instance, this square really is not a very true square. So I am just going to use a toothpick and kind of carve away those edges that I don't want. It comes off really super easy.
And he's a scarecrow, so he doesn't have to be perfect anyway, but I like him a little bit better than that. Same with this line that I have here. I can use one of these sticks that I had used before for um, stirring the enamel. And kind of clean up that line a little bit. Looks like I need a little bit more off right here. I think his face looks pretty good. I'm going to leave it at that. And then the hat. Even though I did that cross hatching with a dry brush, I still want to add a little bit more. So I'm going to go just back and forth with my toothpick all along this curve of the brim of his hat. And then I'm going to go up and down on his hat. And it adds just a lot more texture to that piece. It's very subtle. You won't be able to, it won't like stand right out at you. But it does make it look a little bit more like straw. Same with the top part of his hat. I'm going with that curve. and then up and down. Okay, his hat is done. The patches on his shirt need some stitching on them. So I'm going to use a very light touch Add a few stitches. And his shirt is going to have to go back in the kiln, er, sorry, back in the oven um, so that those stitches can dry. So I'm gonna stick that in real quick. And while I'm doing, well, that's drying. Let's check his eyeballs. This one, the pupil isn't quite as round as I want it. You can see how easy it is just to touch it up with the toothpick. I'm going to use some super glue. I'm going to glue his eyes on. Just a dot. Make sure it's not gel super glue. That leaves a mark. And I'll glue his nose on. And I'm going to give him some hair. And to do that, I use tile nippers or glass nippers and I have some scrap yellow glass and I'm going to put it pretty close to the edge and squeeze so that I'm getting these long skinny irregular shards and this is, this is going to be his hair or some straw kind of like some straw I'm also going to put it on his body Okay, that might be enough. I had cut some previously too. And I'm going to just put a little bit of super glue here and glue some hair on his head. The top part will be covered up by the hat, so I'm not too worried about that being totally even.
So there's his hair. And I'm going to, if you notice, this piece here fits pretty nicely with his head. And I like to put his, head, his hat tilted just a little bit. Actually, he could use another piece of hair maybe here. I'm going to put a little scrap of glass right here. It doesn't matter what color because it's going to be covered. But what that will do is let this brim attach to both his hat and his hair here so that everything stays nice and secure. So there our scarecrow has a hat. I'm going to um, put this flower on his hat. This flower I did using freeze and fuse, using a candy mold that was for flowers. If you um, don't know how to do freeze and fuse, I have a link on my video in the description here that will tell you how to do freeze and fuse. And let's see, if this is ready. And his body is ready as well. I'm going to put three little buttons. My buttons, I just used little nuggets that I made out of scrap glass. And if you don't know this already, what you can do is you can just put little scraps in the kiln on full fuse. And when they come out, because they are three millimeters when they go in and they like to come out at six millimeters, there'll be nice round little balls here for you. So for the most part, we're done. You can see he looks like a scarecrow, but we're making him a bobblehead. So since he's a bobblehead, we need to piece him together. So to do that, I have a three inch wire and I have a two inch wire. The three inch wire will go between his head and his body. And if you also look in the description under materials, it says that you do need three clear pieces of glass that are one inch by one half inch. And these will be kind of in the background. You're not gonna see them, they're gonna be behind him. And I'm using my super glue just to put that together. I need to put this thin fire paper right here. And what this does is it allows me to attach this piece of glass up in here on his head. That way, when we use him as a bobble head or when we bend the wires to make him into a bobble head, this part down here will not have the wire attached because this is acting as a barrier between his face and his forehead there. So we're gonna put this about here My two inch wire is going to go down here and this will act as a securing piece when we put him onto a piece of wood as a base. And I'm going to add a little bit more glue, line everything up. So if you were paying attention, I have my one piece of clear glass up in here about where his eyebrows are. I have another piece of clear glass right in here at the top of his body. And my third piece of clear glass is down in here. Now, he needs some straw around his neck. So I'm gonna use some more of these little pieces that I cut so that he has some straw around his neckline.
Okay, now, as soon as his pieces have dried here, he's ready to go into the kiln. Sorry about that. My scarecrow is out of the kiln. And two things I need to do. One is that I need to cut this wire short enough that uh, when I put it through this wood, it's not gonna make it too, uh, the wire won't be too long. And ignore this hole, this was in the wood when I got it, I think they were meant for ornaments, but I drilled a teeny hole here that's just about as big as the wire. And I'm going to test it and make sure that my wire doesn't go all the way through. It looks good, it looks like it's gonna just sit there nicely. And if not, just use your wire cutters and just nip it off a teeny, teeny bit. And then the other thing I need to do is bend this wire so his head isn't way above his body. And I'm gonna bend it forwards first. Kind of fold him in half. And you can use pliers if you need to. You can see his, his body's kind of folded in half here. Then I'm going to fold his head back up. And, and it might take a little bit of adjusting when, once you do it. So you can see here his wire, the wire for his head kind of zigzags and that's what gives him the ability to kind of bobble a little bit. Adjust it just a little bit. I'm going to use some E6000 and put it on the wire and I'm also gonna put it just here on the bottom of his body. Stick it in the hole. I'm going to take off any extra. Let it dry and my bobblehead is done. So you can see here, his head kind of wiggles if you touch it. Kind of a goofy looking little guy, but I think he's kind of cute. I hope you found this scarecrow bobblehead video helpful and fun. If you liked him, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And also while you're on my channel, look for my other bobbleheads. I have one that's a Santa and one that's a reindeer for when you start thinking about Christmas. Thanks. Bye.